deader than James A. Patrick. Ramona. <laughs> Hi. Jesus. I thought I heard your voice down there. The murderer of local entrepreneur and aspiring Lieutenant Governor candidate James St. Patrick has just been arrested. Our team is just arriving on- What's happening, Power fans? You're back on the channel. I got my wife rolling with me. We're going to do our review of Power Episode 14, Reversal of Fortunes. It should have been called Power Episode Short Man Tate because this was all about his perspective. We learned some more details. Considering the leaks that are online, people saying they didn't like this episode, I liked it. How did you feel about it? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I think this was a good setup for what you could do with a story with Councilman Tate. We're going to discuss all that in this video. Before we started, me and my wife also had a spirited debate about biasness in the medical field. She's a doctor. I'm a former respiratory therapist, ran an outpatient clinic myself. And if y'all want us to talk about those type of things on this channel that affect our community and other communities, leave us a comment. You find me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Grab me on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting hot on that podcast. And if you like to DM me, hit me on Instagram, man. I'm putting my fitness stuff up there as I'm getting my cuts for the my wife don't want me to say the other word. Can I say it? No. Okay. Follow me on Instagram, on Instagram DM me your stories. Let's jump straight into this review. First thing we see, short man Tate gets kicked out of a bar because he's getting drunk. We, they introduce his brother. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Lorenz Tate's real life brother playing his brother on this show. He wakes up at his brother's house, tells them he's out of the race. What did you think? I was just, you know, happy to see a little bit of um, Tate's background. So mm -hmm. this is the first time that he hinted anything about his family. I think in previous shows, they um, hinted to the fact that he used to be a police officer or something like that. But mm -hmm. we never knew anything about his family. So getting to see that aspect of it, I thought was was nice. And throughout this story, we learned kind of more of the dynamics between him and his brother, which I also think is another setup for another show. Mm -hmm. There was some sibling rivalry going on. One brother feels a certain way about the way the other brother is doing. One brother has disdain. It was a good little setup for something else that could be. Yeah, it also shows you that Tate apparently has some demons as well because it doesn't look like that was his first rodeo with them calling a brother to come pick him up. Exactly. She got yeah. on the phone. She said, your brother here again, drunk, come mm -hmm. get him. And so you know that, you know, that's a, a common occurrence for either for him now or something going on in the, with him in the past. Yep. Then we finally see the bloody socks. We've all been speculating who was the bloody socks. A lot of us thought that that could have been our man Spank, but it wasn't. It was a white guy being tortured by the henchman that would eventually be hired by Councilman Tate, Cedric the Entertainer, whose name is Croup, and his son torturing a white guy because he'd done something to some little girls. Mm -hmm. I ain't need to see all that. Sorry. You ain't, you, you ain't uh, like... You, watching them carve out pieces of his... Die and uh, that was a little too much for me. But we don't know what he done to the little girls. Still, the visual, I didn't want to see. That was a little too graphic for me. Right, right. Then we see from the trailer again, we saw a hand, and a lot of you guys got this one right. Y'all said that it was a mature hand, and I don't know how the hell you could tell it was a mature hand, but you did. And it was Councilman Tate at the shooting range with his brother, just shooting around, considering letting off some steam after what happened. And we learned that his brother is also a New York police officer. Mm -hmm. What did you think? I mean, it introduces an interesting dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming both of them were on the force together back in the day. And right. Tate jumped out the game. Right. Um, I don't know. It was just, again, providing more background into Tate's you know, family life. Tate had, quote unquote, higher ambitions. Right. Them just being a cop. I guess. And he allowed himself to get to, to, to go do something different, which also continues to highlight the underlying story that's going on between him and his brother. Mm -hmm. So next we see Tate bust up and crash the meeting with uh, the governor running Lieutenant Walsh, um, Ramona, and the guy that's running the DNC arena for that um, sector of New York. And Tate goes in there. He's mad. He's hot. And it eventually gets to Loretta Wall saying, I don't want to have another issue with a black man in a hoodie. And they basically throw him out. What was, you, what was going through your mind about that scene? Tate was looking desperate. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it exactly. He was desperate. He wanted to continue um, to be in the governor's race. Mm -hmm. And he was going to convince them to, you know, keep him in the game. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> they wasn't hearing it though. You got Ramona, <laughs> Ramona, uh, what's her name? Loretta Walsh. Loretta Walsh and the Democratic guy were Steve looking at him Ottman. like, yeah, Steve they Ottman. wasn't hearing none of it. No, nah, they weren't trying to hear it. So at this point, Tate is really feeling the blues, ladies and gentlemen, because in all honesty, even though Ghost has pretty much beat him down in his family and in this hood he come from, he was the he was the ghost. He was the winner. Right. And now he's getting defeated. So that lands him in the church with that crooked ass pastor, Pastor Macedon. <laughs> Sound like a damn dinosaur. And the pastor reminds him of what he meant to this community, but more importantly, the promises Tate made to him. Mm -hmm. And eventually Tate leaves out of there saying, God, Lord, I need you to work for my ass. Or some kind of quote, I'm paraphrasing something he said. What did, what did you think about that? What was the significance of that to the show? Uh, I think there was a little bit more underlying between Tate and the pastor's Yeah, comment. man. Because the you... pastor wasn't kind of like giving him this rah-rah speech or you can do it. You, you promised us you was going to do good for the community. He made it seem like Tate made some promises to him mm -hmm. and he wanted him to deliver or else. <laughs> that pastor crooked, y'all. And I would love to see him in some kind of a spinoff because I believe he could play a TV Jakes, a TV evangelist, and be caught up in some boy-on-boy -boy scams. I would love to see because that pastor crooked. Mm -hmm. He got something going he on. He was the one who was putting the squeeze on uh, for, for Raina's funeral. Right, right. Yeah, yep. trying to be, you know, wanted the attention, wanted to be for show and... Yeah, so it was something else going on in that conversation. Oh, you better believe it. You better yeah. believe it. Then we see Tate meet with Croup, who is played by Cedric the Entertainer. You guys got that right earlier this year. And the young man with Cedric the Entertainer, son. And my wife brought up this at this point. What is up with all these son, father, mother, daughter dynamics? And some of you that have seen the leak, you kind of know, is leading up to that Oedipus complex. For those of you that haven't seen the leak, I'm not going to spoil it. But he meets up with them to basically tell them to back off killing ghosts. And they get upset saying, what, you done hired somebody else? And they was like, we killing this nigga. It's either us or, or we're going to do it without we killing this dude. What do you think was up with that? I did, thought it was a little odd. I'm like, well, just get y'all money and, and go on back home. Mm -hmm. Just don't let you mean have Tate make y'all drive up there for nothing. Get at least half of what he promised you and go on back home. Yeah, yeah, just take what is what, what is up with people making stupid decisions when they can get a hands on money? You seen Dre right. make some stupid decision. Right. You see these goofballs done came from Washington, yeah. DC to New York. But no, Tate said he wasn't gonna pay him. Uh huh. So I mean, but you can make him you can you make, can him, make pay. him pay you. Yeah, you bands yeah. make him dance. Yeah. Yeah. They could have made make, him pay. I mean, I guess they use the rationale of, well, we here now and you're gonna be able to track the fact that we came here. So if he die, you're gonna be able to pin it on us anyway, so we're mm -hmm. gonna do it anyway. Which I don't understand the rationale for that. Just get your money and go home. To be like you know, it would, <laughs> if they were smart, it would have been easier for Tate to just pay them to go away. Right. Then, you know, try to go right. out. Right. Pay them for their yeah. troubles and you go, know get on back up the road. Exactly. Next, we see Croup and his son, they're stalking ghosts. So the other pair of eyes that were stalking ghosts besides Angela's sister was these two. And they're stalking ghosts to learn the schedule because they're going to make the attempt on his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just cleared up what, you know, what we were trying to figure out what was going on in the past. So you got them on one side of the street and you got Piles on the other side of the street, both stalking them. Yeah. Then we see Tate meet up with Ghost. This is from the trailer when we seen Ghost in Club Truth with the server girl with him, and they whip their neck around to look at somebody, and it was Tate coming. Basically, Tate comes in there, and we all thought from earlier in the season that he was trying to warn him about Tariq. Mm -hmm. But what he was really trying to warn him about was he was about to hire these two dudes to kill him, and he wanted them to back off. And he was going to try to tell Ghost, but Ghost was being Ghost was feeling himself. Yeah. I mean, feeling it to the point he was sucking his own penis. I mean, Ghost wasn't trying to hear none of it. He thought Tate was bitter. He was going to try to help Tate out a little bit, but then he was like, Tate, get the hell up out of here. Tate was going to warn him, but I'm sure he wasn't going to put his name in it and let him let him know that he hired him. Oh, of course not. He was just let him know these two goons not. are coming after you. I don't know. You know, I ain't had nothing to do with it, but I'm just going to let you know. Exactly. Now, here was a. The next scene was very telling. Tate stops for coffee because he's stressed out again. He's beat up, almost feeling defeated. He stops for coffee. <laughs> and the girl recognizes who he is. And she's like, Oh, you're, you're Governor Tate. She said it way Councilman more. Tate. Councilman She said it way more sexy than I can say. It. You're Councilman Tate. And she wants his picture. Then, I guess the, the black lady was the owner of the restaurant. She wants his picture. 
And then we have a mini press conference with the hood still supporting Tate because at the time they don't know what's going on behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And what did you think was significant about that scene? I'll tell you mine after. You I mean, go. he was ready to throw the towel in, and they helped boost his ego. He probably mm -hmm. felt like, you know, oh, I'm still the man. I still got pool in the community. I got a bunch of people backing me, mm -hmm. so I, I need to stay in it. Exactly. That's all I thought. Mm -hmm. And and Tate is a glutton for the fame. Mm -hmm. He loves that spotlight. Right. He loves being the one that, quote unquote, made it from the hood, that done it. He played the white man's game. He won. He played the black people game. He won. And now he wants that notoriety. And this lets me know at that point that there was more going on with Tate, that he was not really going to go out without a fight, mm -hmm. getting back in office somehow, some way, because he loves that power and privilege. He was ready to ham it up. So yep. let's take a group oh, selfie. Oh, oh the my biggest Kool-Aid smile I on mean, his face. I mean, <laughs> when, when you talk about a brother playing a crooked politician, he is slam dunking this right. thing. So I would love to see him. Job. Yeah, he's doing a good job. My wife predicted this. Tate's jump off that he kicked to the curb shows back up, and she tries to convince Tate to get out the race. Now, if y'all don't remember the jump off, the jump off got reprimanded by Ramona. Then she cut a back deal with Ramona to get a, um, a, um, a political power seat. And she has that seat now. She's telling Tate that DNC wants him to get out. And Tate is just kind of looking at her with the side eye like, you groupie. Mm -hmm. you, you, you screwed your way to the top. Mm -hmm. What did you think was going on when they brought her back? I mean, it just... She confirmed that Ramona put her up to it to come try to convince yes. her to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that Ramona still has her hands and things behind the scene. Right. So she right. still helped, you know, controlling stuff. Exactly. Next scene, we've seen it three or four times. Somebody shoot at Ghost and Tommy. And we've, we've been figured out it was Cedric the Entertainer and his son. We already figured that out. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't know was how did someone get away? Um, who exactly was shooting at Go uh, Tommy? And what we're trying to figure out is, do not get your concealed carry weapons license from the Ray Charles School of Blind Shooting. This man had ghosts standing there not moving, Cedric's son, and missed them twice. They don't got no concealed carry weapon. And missed them, what, what, they just they got, they just, they just criminals. They, yeah, they are. Well, what, they hit me. Well, what, whatever, whatever place they go to practice shooting, they need to turn the damn lights on. Yeah, Cedric you, needed to do some more training before he took his kid out there on the road. Yeah, <laughs> especially shooting that ghost in time. Yeah. You don't know, you know how dangerous these Omar, dudes are. if is? you know how bad of a shot your kid is, you need to be the one taking the shot and have him standing off to the side watching. Yeah, I'm sure Cedric didn't know it was going to turn out like that. Oh, but goodness. you notice he did give him this, this, give the son the best gun, the one with the scope on it, and damn, the son still missed, and man. He didn't just barely miss. He missed by like two feet. Right. <laughs> Against Ghost and Tommy. Right. You can't miss with Ghost and Tommy. Mm -hmm. And then we later, we we learned that, uh, you know, Cedric got killed. And while Tommy's getting away, Tommy goes right past the son. But the son couldn't do nothing because his gun jammed. Mm -hmm. You saw that point when the son was yeah. in. And when he finally got the gun working again, Tommy was getting away in his mom's BMW. Mm -hmm. And that's when the son was shooting at him. I was like, bro, man, <laughs> come on, bro. You got to shoot better than that. Next scene, we see Croup's son calls Tate, and Tate <laughs> pretends that his phone is breaking up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was hilarious. Well, Reenact what Tate said, honey. You do, you do Tate so well. What did he, how did he do it? He said, Hello? oh, we're breaking up. We're breaking up. We're breaking, we're breaking up. up. <laughs> and then, not after that, he said, oh, you, you have the wrong number. Please don't call this number again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, short man oh, Tate. Oh, goodness. Then we see Tate meet with Tasha to say James is planning to throw Tariq under the bus with mm -hmm. the Ray Ray theory. Yeah. Did you ever for any moment think that she was going to be down for someone outside the family circle? No, I mean, she didn't buy it. Of course he, not. I mean, so first he met with, well, Dre yep. gave him the information. Mm -hmm. And so that's the information he ran to Tasha with and fed, her, fed to her as if it was coming from coming from ghosts. ghosts. And it was yeah. coming from Dre. Yeah. yeah. And Tasha, I mean, she was wise in that situation where she didn't really buy it. But I still think he dropped a seed in her ear mm -hmm. where he said, you're not even going to do something to protect your son. Um, so, I mean... It played out how I thought it should have. She right. didn't buy it, but I think her wheels were turning where she was still considering, you know, what if he really is telling the truth. Right, right, possibly. Then we see Tate taking out garbage at his brother's home. 
Mm -hmm. And then Carter, who is the son of Cedric the Entertainer, runs up on Tate, upset because Tate didn't warn him that it was going to be two people. Mm -hmm. His dad is dead. He's hot. And he's all up on Tate. Tate is trying to be all smirmy and politician to give him a little speech. And brother ain't trying to hit it. He just mm -hmm. lost his daddy. From the back, Tate's brother, the cop, shoots him, mm -hmm. takes him out. And then Tate lies to the family about his conditions of knowing this guy said it's just a crackhead in your hood. Mm -hmm. And the brother's like, bro, this neighborhood has been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. We the hood, but we done cleaned up. We ain't had no killings and craziness since you popped up. Mm -hmm. What was the dynamic for that scene for you? I mean, when Tate was walking out by himself right. <laughs> after he sent the, the nephew back in the house, you knew something was about to jump off. Yep. Um, I don't... I don't, I don't know. It, it was, you knew something was about to happen. And then in terms of interacting with his brother, you know, I, I like both of their dynamics. Yeah, I like how yeah. the brother is holding his feet to the fire, mm -hmm. not just, you know, whatever he telling him, he buying hook, line and sinker. Right. He's, uh, I, I really like that dynamic. Mm -hmm. I, I think you could make a show with that. Yeah, you could. You could definitely you could. make a show with that because people in the hood could definitely get behind the brother. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a, a middle class guy just trying to raise his family. Right. Um, he ain't trying to, he doesn't have any higher aspirations. He just wants to raise his family and, you know, weekends, whatever. Uh -huh. You know, just common folk guy. Right. But the brother, on the other hand, has done been laid in bed with Anglo Saxons, done learned how to be a sleazy person, and has these deeper ambitions. I can easily see people gravitating to the dynamic between these two brothers and what could drive them apart, kind of similar to what has driven Ghost and Tommy apart. Mm -hmm. Only difference is these two would be on the legal side. Mm -hmm. You can easily see that dynamic. Ghost wants out the game. Tommy wants to stay in the game. Mm -hmm. This brother just wants to have a common folk life. Tate wants a higher ambitious life being in politics and is going to do anything to get it. I don't think the brother is looking at Tate like from a jealous standpoint. No, it's no, just, no, yeah. no. Yeah. no. Yeah. It's like not you at all. Don't, and then no, it's like, and all. the brother isn't doing dirty. So it's like, no, you right. don't do your exactly. thing, but just exactly. don't bring your dirt back to my house. Right. Which is he what don't, Tate is doing. Right. He don't want the dirt right. associated with his family. He don't want right. nothing that's going to put his family in jeopardy. Right. He's comfortable with his life, mm -hmm. which is fine. But Tate and his ambitions is causing dirt to be stowed on the brother. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Putting his family at risk, and, and then you're going to try to dump on me and my neighborhood yeah. because yeah, the nigga, you're doing dirt. Talking about my neighborhood. My neighborhood was fine for your punk ass got here. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's short man Tate. Oh, well, his brother's shorter, so I can't pick on Tate no more. Then we see Tate get a phone call at 2 p.m. in the night. The DNC. Is taking all their furniture, all their paraphernalia out of his office at 2 p.m. in the night. He runs up in there like, man, what are y'all doing? It's 2 p.m. in the DNC don't care. And then during that same interaction at the office, Rodriguez pops up. She working her ass off. 2 p.m. at night, she's showing up at his office to say we can't get ghosts. 2 p.m. at night. Two, 2 excuse me, 2 a.m. in the morning. She popping up at his office to say we can't get ghosts. There's uh -huh. nothing we can do. Rashad is upset. He thought he was going to be able to testify against Ghost. And then to add more salt to his wound, Simon and Loretta Walsh come in there to ask Tate to endorse Ghost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bruh. Talk, talk about kick a man when he's down. Talk about right. kick a black man when he's down. Y'all hear the bells of heaven calling Rashard Tate? Oh, goodness. What did you think was the significance of that whole entire thing? I mean, it still shows that, you know, everybody has lost faith in him and they're against him and it's time for him to throw in a towel. It's, so basically the world is coming down on him and it's time for him to hang it up. That's it, man. Yeah. yeah. Time. It's time for you to give it up. Yeah. But he's still not giving up, y'all, because the next scene we see... Dre meets Tate. Mm -hmm. Tate has a new plot to kill Ghost now. He's going to give Dre this money. We've already seen how this went down, man. I still can't get over Dre not having a full tank of gas when he's trying to get away from a crime of killing Ghost. And long story short on this scene, basically, a lot of us said, okay, Dre, just run away with the $100,000. You know, forget kill, just run away. Mm -hmm. But Dre also needed a new identity and a license tag because he was also on the run from the FBI because he's supposed to be in witness protection to testify. Mm -hmm. But he's running all that. Mm -hmm. And so Tate had his new identity mm -hmm. and was going to hold it over his head and was going to release that identity if Dre disappeared and didn't do his job. 
Is there anything need to be said about that scene? You can't undo, I guess, what's been done. Like we said back then, he should have just ran. He should have took the money and left. Mm -hmm. and, and he would have been living clear wherever he was going, Las Vegas or wherever he was headed. Right. Should have just, met, yep, yeah. just done that. Then we see, this was a very telling scene about Councilman Tate and his brother. They're in the cop car mm -hmm. because the brother had to call in this, this death of shooting a guy that was after Tate. Mm -hmm. He reveals to Tate like, bro, I know you're a scammer. Let me know if there's anything else because I had to call this in. Right. I had to. Right. I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. I had to call it in to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And the brother is basically, you know, kind of not really telling them the truth, but eating around the cookie. And that's when we get into the dynamics that have gone on between them from childhood to now, where Tate's brother feels like he's always been the winner of the two brothers. Mm -hmm. That he, he well, I don't not necessarily always been the winner. That he always get away with dirt. I but guess. He, but he also said he was the one that was winner. He was the one where things came easier, and yeah. he get away with the yeah. dirt. Yeah, and he get away with the dirt. Uh huh. I had to work hard for what I got. Right. And I earned it. Mm -hmm. You. You, uh, Donald Trump, you your way. By. Yeah, you, Donald Trump, yeah. your way to getting your stuff. Mm -hmm. To me, that just showed um, the thickness and the richness between those two individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, there's definitely a love hate going on between them. Maybe I when still Tate. I think the brother is salty towards what Tate has and where Tate is going. No, no one is arguing that he's salty uh -huh. about what Tate has and where he's going. What he's salty about is. Every time Tate ass get on a high and falls to he earth, probably gotta save him. he's got to save him. Yeah. That's no, what he's salty that. about. I can buy that. And he's probably salty about the manner in which Tate goes to get his success. Right. Because all he does is work hard. Mm. But Tate lies, cheats, and steals to get the things that he wants. Right. That's what the brother's salty about. Right. And I've also thought, like, the whole dynamic of that, that conversation, basically... You know when your brother or sister is lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he trying right. to convince, and then you know Tate had his nerve to one be doing dirty, and your and your brother know you doing dirty, but mm -hmm. instead of kind of accepting that and acknowledging that, you gonna fling fling kind of abuse back in his face, yeah. saying you ain't you know what, you what ain't the, nothing. What the how did he? How did he come at his brother? Basically saying, um, "Look where you live, or you right. don't have what I." You stay in the hood. Yeah, it's kind of like you know he's being all indignant because mm -hmm. his brother caught him in whatever lie he's, and, he's, he got and, caught in. And then he's gonna flip it back on him that living in the hood is something bad. You're beneath me, basically yeah. is what he was trying to say. So he said that out of one side of his face, and then the right. other side of his face, he's trying to tell the brother that really his brother is winning because he got the family, he got the house. Exactly. He got the, you know, mm -hmm. nice, the, the kids or whatever. The government job with the benefits. Yeah, so yeah. he's trying to also paint it as if, but you really doing better than me. What he's trying <laughs> to paint is he's the victim. Tate is trying to paint mm -hmm. he's the victim mm -hmm. because he took a risk on the way life is in America, and the brother didn't. The brother just chose, I'm just going to be safe. And now, because you made that choice, not only do you have the good, but you also got the bad. Mm -hmm. It's what Tate is trying to pin on him. Immediately following the brother's ride and their talk, they get to the police station. Tate is questioned by the other police officers who realize he's a police officer, and his brother's standing in the background. Mm -hmm. They question Tate about the events going on the truth, and then they just start having the police powwow up in that joint. Well, right. it, Tate is not a cop, ladies and gentlemen. He's just a civilian right now. Uh -huh. But then you see they pounding each other, once a cop, always a cop. Uh -huh. And they say some very questionable things in regards to the person that was killed. Right. And y'all can see that Tate's brother, ain't having it. he ain't having none right. of it. He's like, yo, where's the apathy? Where's the police decorum? Right. And why y'all telling my brother something he's not part of the police force? Right. Tell me what your thoughts were when you saw all that. It highlighted his brother's character for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it tells you that he's one of the good guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's been trying to keep everything professional. Regardless exactly. of who Tate is, you know, him being a brother, a former police officer, he's trying to keep it professional. Right. And it ain't happening in the room. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> it, it also just stokes the fire of police mistrust, mm -hmm. you know, First, you have 
African Americans not trusting the police. Then you just have regular common folk not trusting the police because the police is a brotherhood on top of that. Mm -hmm. Immediately while they're sitting in there, someone busts up in that room and says, there was a shooting at Truth. Somebody is dead. They don't know who, mm -hmm. right? In front of a witness. In front of a witness, man. This guy sitting it, in the room shouldn't know nothing is going on. No type of police business whatsoever. Right. And he, yeah. But what, now this is where the brother... The brother showed his love of his brother, but made a mistake. He takes Tate with him to Truth. Hmm. I mean, what, that's the other police officers. Basically done said he's he, he's a cop. Said he coming. Once a cop, always said, a cop. Said, come on, let's go. We going. I mean, and so I guess the brother's like, Did he going to go, he's going to go with me. Hmm. So they, But when he got there, he said, don't get your tail out the car either. He, he did you say that. You sit right in this car. Yep, sit your short man ass in this car. Don't go nowhere. Mm -hmm. And what did Tate do? He sat there for a little while. <laughs> he sat there for a little while. Then he finally got out and started trying to lurk around. Lord have mercy. Now, it don't make any sense whatsoever why Tate would want his face seen anywhere around that crime scene. One, you know you didn't hire two different people to go after this guy and kill him. Mm -hmm. um, in the public eye, they know that you and Ghost more than likely have this rivalry going. Mm -hmm. Why are you popping up as a, as a private citizen all of a sudden to something that's unfolding easily because no, he had a few issues going on number one his ego number two he needed to know exactly what happened to make sure that his ass is not going to be under fire but it still looks bad it looks you, bad you're bringing on look, more flyer it looks fire bad. and speculations yeah. by he being should, there right he should lay low but right. he should lay low but during this whole that whole incident was another issue we seen from the trailer. We saw Tate walking to truth. We all wanted to know why was he walking to truth. Mm -hmm. He was walking up to truth because he had gotten the word with his brother in the police department. Something happened at truth, so he's there now. Mm -hmm. And then a reporter realizes who he is, and instead of running from the camera, he's being recorded live, and she tells him, James St. Patrick, ghost, is dead. Mm -hmm. And he takes that shit and he spins it. That stuff happens so fast. Right. I'm like, that's like unreal. Come on. <laughs> the police, they still in there investigating, trying to figure out what's going on. Is she already reporting the news <laughs> that ain't even been confirmed yet? Right, right. Well, apparently it was confirmed. Ghost was dead. And Tate turns that around, makes it a political optic situation. And spins it as only short man Tate can he take. He got on his high horse yep. and gave his Martin Luther King speech. He he took a little spindle and spun a damn jacket. That's what he did. He spun that joint. Mm. From there, we see the DNC, Stephen Ottman, and Lorette Walsh show up to Tate's brother's house. Wait, I just want to call out how his brother put him on blast and said, how did you come up with that BS on the spot? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that brother was funny. That brother uh, had that brother has an iconic line He's this sitting show. there looking at him like, Bro. How, how you just pull that out your behind? The look on his face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Then the DNC shows up at Tate's family's home. In essence, we didn't know what they were showing up for at first. Mm -hmm. Well, Did, I assumed. Yeah, yeah you kind of had a, yeah. an assumption. And during the whole talk, Tate spins the story with Ghost being gone, I need to be governor. Loretta, Loretta Walsh is like, the hell you will. Now, her true colors came out. Them fangs came out of her. Real, real. The hell you will. And then Tate gets into his little being political. Don't cuss in front of the children. She's a children in this house. There's children in this house. <laughs> And then, as she's in her rage, Steve Ottman, the head of the DNC for New York, was like, hmm, Loretta, take your ass to the car. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Steve, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Tate is looking at her with that smug look like, get your ass out this house. Get out. She sends her out, and then he shakes Steve's hand and said, I'm the man for governor. Did you see that coming? No, but I'm glad it did. Even though, like, Tate... You know, I don't care too much for him. Mm -hmm. it, it serves them right for him to flip it on him like that. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all the ones need me. Y'all come lurking around asking me, and y'all had a nerve to want me to be her lieutenant governor? Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. I'm going to be the governor. She going to be the lieutenant governor. Right. Take right. it or leave it. <laughs> it Turnabout is mean, fair it's, play. It's a power play. Yeah, man. It's business. And it ain't like she ain't do it. No, you she know, did when it. She came around earlier in the show. 
I was wondering, like, why is it that she's going to be the front runner and they assumed, I guess, that Tate was going to be the, lieutenant, the governor. lieutenant governor behind her when both of them are vying for the position. Yeah, both of them are trying to run for governor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, he flipped that. Yeah. He go, was. go. Mm -hmm. I, I'm happy with that. Yep. Go Tate. And, and basically, Tate told her, her, like, look, you've just been searching for the black and brown vote anyway. That's all you've been trying to do. You've been trying to get that for years. I already got that, and it's going to be easy for me to get the white vote because, remember, Simon Stearns is still kind of lurking in the background. Mm -hmm. Then the next scene was right from the trailer. We see Tate in a church, and we was wondering, was he giving a sermon or was he mm -hmm. doing preaching, ghost death, whatever, and Ramona's in this same mm -hmm. church looking very upset. You called yeah. that on the, on the review. Mm -hmm. What he's doing in this church, this is uh, Reverend Mastodon's church, he is announcing that he will now be running for governor mm -hmm. of New York. Right. What did you have to right. say about Ramona's look on her face? You I knew that look, the way, they, now, these are some really good actors, because I picked yeah. that out when we did the review of the trailer. She had a little sadness in her face, but mm -hmm. also a little disgust, but it looked right. more sad than, than disgust, anything. Else. But like, it was I can't both. believe what's mm -hmm. going on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, kudos to them for their, their acting job. Yeah. And Tate gave, if you paid attention, man, he gave an iconic speech oh, in good. that church. He quoted this saying, and I quote, New York leads the way. New York leads the way. Mm -hmm. New York leads the way. I was like, damn. Oh, Look at goodness. this short man giving a good damn speech. Yeah, yeah. He, just, he just morphed into a, a pastor, had a little hop in his step, throwing his hand in the air, got everybody chiming in. And now, then, ladies and gentlemen, that is a microcosm of what's going on, what's wrong with our country in the first place, that someone can come with all that pomp and circumstance. You have no real clear idea of how they are personally, but because they can get up there and put get and put on a show like it's a pet rally, get your juices going. You want to get behind them. Mm -hmm. Power has told on politicians. Then we see Tate learns Dre is dead via his brother. Mm -hmm. Another die. What do you think was going on with that when the brother dropped it on Tate? I mean, the brother, the whole reason his brother telling him, like, ain't this another coincidence? Right. Ain't you lucky? And why don't you go and pick up a lottery ticket on your way home? Because uh. Everything is just falling, falling right in your hands the way you couldn't have dreamed it coming up that way. And the brother ain't no slow lead. No. The brother, no, good and damn well, luck don't stream together like right. that. No, uh -huh. luck don't stream together like yeah. that. Yeah. The, the, the guy is dead who I think has something to do with you in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then he go, Dre turning up dread, dead, who you told me was going out to kill ghosts. Mm -hmm. Like. <laughs> Like, I know you're not that clean. <laughs> no, nah, he So he's looking clean. at him with the side eye. Yeah, yeah, I would give it to him, too. The next one was very funny. <laughs> this was funny. This was funny as hell. Tate get, is talking to the press outside, and he tells the press <laughs> that Ramona and Ghost were a, had an adulterous affair. <laughs> mm -hmm. As he looks down there and see Ramona is doing a press conference, to deviate from her and to get back at her, because remember, Tate was like, Ramona, we can make this. We can be bedfellows. Mm -hmm. And then he looks down there and said that her and Ghost had an adulterous affair. She ain't never getting none of them draws. No, she didn't. <laughs> I ain't see that one coming, but I, I don't put it past Tate. Now he being petty and dirty. He about to get any and everybody who turned against him and, and, and doubted him. His, the name of this show should have been Scorched Earth. For right, him. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Next, we see Simon, the white dude that was working with Ghost, working mm -hmm. with um, Tate, gives his endorsement money to um, Tate mm -hmm. and says, it was never an issue, it was just business. Mm -hmm. And Tate gives that famous line, Poli po politics make strange bedfellows, mm -hmm. and they shake hands. Yeah, so they're about to use each other and take that ride to the governorship. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, business is business. Mm-hmm. Then you, this, this is what you predicted. Tate's jump off comes back. Now that he's on top, she is literally back on top of him. Mm -hmm. Talk about the significance of her coming back. It just, you know what I got to say about that. I mean, she making a power play. He back in power, so she want to be around that power. She's just a power groupie. Mm -hmm. That's all she of is. Course. She, she'll hop on any stick that can give her magic. Mm -hmm. That's what she's doing. Okay. I'm just listening. Go next. But you just <laughs> said that's what she's doing. Uh -huh. It's just I worded it in a manner that yeah. everybody can relate to. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's the same concept. She like pogo sticks with money and power, fellas. 
Then, after they're done, Ramona knocks on the door of the hotel room, mm -hmm. pops in, <laughs> and she is fire mad at what Councilman Tate said about her sleeping with ghosts because she never really slept with them. Mm -hmm. And then she slaps the purity taste out of it. I saw spit hit the window she oh, slapped me so hard. Uh -huh. What did you think was going on with that scene? I mean, he lied on her. I mean, it would have happened eventually. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, but I don't know if I want Ramona to go down like that mm -hmm. in terms of being you know, defeated take, by taking him. a fall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping that in the next episode when they do like that, when they continue to advance the story, that eventually she gets the upper hand on him. But who knows if they have enough time to develop. There ain't like no that. way they got enough time for that because this has got to lead to another spinoff if they're going to keep developing right, these characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and here's the one that you like. Because you, you, you was all up over this jump off situation. Ladies and gentlemen, if I ever decide I want to have me a jump off, I can forget it because this chick is like the FBI. Oh. I would have to go literally to probably another country for something like that because you called this one. You said you bet that she, the jump off, had paid for the room and that Tate was going to kick her out. Yeah, as soon as he sent Ramona, <laughs> as soon as Ramona went, you know, scampering out the uh, apartment in the jump, and whatever her name is, she came down the stairs acting like they was back together again. I'm right. like, oh, she followed Ramona, Ramona right out that door watch. Right, because she was gloating about him taking care of Ramona mm -hmm. because of the way Ramona had, had you know, had her in the pistol. Right. So oh, she no. all thinking she riding, she about to ride the governor coattail mm -hmm. in the office. She in the same boat as Ramona. Mm -hmm. She in the same boat as everybody who burnt, Tate coming after all y'all. Scorched earth. If he, if he can't use you or get money out of you like he getting out of Simon, Simon and oh, Simon going to get it eventually too. But if he can't Simon get money, got too much money to get it. If he can't, if he can't use you, you gone. Right. And he don't need to use her because she probably come a dime a dozen. So he don't need her. What do you? What do you mean she comes a dime a dozen? He had a. He had. Are a, you saying it's easy to just go find any woman on the block looking to be be married to power? He had a whole cafe full of women who was ready to take that girl place. Y'all heard it here first. When a man has money and power, a woman can be a dime a dozen. You heard it here Certain first. Certain women can be a dime a dozen. You heard it here first. Right here on the Power Review. Oh, goodness. Last thing we're going to say, which was a damning issue. They show a clip of the alleged murderer of ghosts on the news. And Tate, did you see the look on his face? Mm -hmm. He was shocked. <laughs> Very shocked. Yeah. Now, those of you that have seen the leaks, try your best not to spoil it because some of us haven't seen it. And some people watching this um, review haven't seen it. But the look on Tate's face was one of disgust. And it makes me think that whoever he saw knows some dirt on Tate. Possibly. I don't... I, I, for me, it still comes down to Tasha or Tariq. Right. And so... Because you don't know nothing about the league. He want No, I didn't watch him. He wants... Um, he already went and tried to get Tasha to do it. Mm -hmm. And Tasha kind of put up a fuss like she wasn't going to do it. Right. He was surprised at who it was. So mm -hmm. I don't think it was, based on this, I don't think it was Tasha. Mm -hmm. Because he wouldn't have been surprised if he saw her on TV. He was uh, like shocked. Like, I can't believe that that person actually did it. Right. So. so having said that, there's only three suspects left that they have to weave all into the same story in one more episode that's going to come after next weekend because next weekend is Super Bowl. Who are the three? Cooper Sacks, mm -hmm. Tariq, and Tasha. Okay. That's it. I would have loved for them to have done a story about Cooper Sacks, but like we said when we've done these reviews, we knew that everybody wasn't going to get a story in five episodes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love Tommy's story, and I actually like Governor Tate's story. Mm -hmm. Now, pause. They could have done something different with her damn story. I mean, that that, that my man, come on, man. You could have. That was a waste of time, bro. They could have done something different. But I mean, it is what it is. Any closing remarks, honey? We got two weeks left till we get the final betrayal. <sighs> no, it's been a good ride, and I'm yep. just ready for it to be wrapped up. You know what? Question: Would you follow? Would y'all follow Tate? And his family and that whole storyline into a spinoff. Right. I think I would. I think they would do a good job So, with that. So far, we know we've got the Mary J. Blige story coming. We've got Tommy coming. And they're going to be doing a story about Canaan. So, 
Maybe they'll come up with some more because they put the they put the groundwork for several stories, ladies and gentlemen. They could do several stories if they really wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of picking the ones that we all would like the best. Mm -hmm. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like our video, comment, subscribe, download us on the podcast, follow me on Instagram, send me DMs. I love reading you guys' comments over there. And when you have good stories or good shows you want me to review, just hit me on Instagram. And until that next Sexy as Hell Power review, we'll see you.